Hola! Bienvenidos! Welcome to um, this particular series of videos and it's all about taking the mystery out of uh, the Lelo situation. These what are called pronouns and I'm going to come to this. You're going to have to excuse me, I'm going to have a rant. Okay, it's rant time. Now, before we start on this, looking at the way that um, the confusion around pronouns and, and stuff like that. I'm going to talk to you about what I think is the biggest problem that we have when we're learning a language, okay? Or at least one of the biggest problems. You see, if it was just learning a language, that would be okay. That would be challenge enough, okay? But what we've got is not only have we got the trouble of learning a language, thank you very much, we've also got this terrible obstacle of having to learn the names of tenses, the names of grammatical uh, structures, okay? And they are rubbish names. They are excuse me, but they are rubbish names. Now, the only thing I can imagine is that, you know this expression, uh, knowledge is power, okay? Well, years ago, when um, somebody wanted to be powerful, what they had to do was to have the information and that for that information not to be accessible to everyday man, okay? We still have the same situation because the people that invented the names for all of the tenses and these grammatical script structures did not at any moment have learners in mind. They did not. What they wanted to do, and this is just my feeling, I might be completely wrong, but they wanted to show how erudite they were, how very, very intelligent, and how they could invent names that bear no resemblance whatsoever to the grammatical structure that you're using. Now, for example, let's just, first of all, see now, now I'm getting myself worked up now. Do you know that in the UK, in Great Britain, and I think the same reflects in, in the USA, the same uh, situation, do you know that 80% of the population cannot identify the difference between a verb, a noun, and an adjective? Okay, 80%. So if you're in that group, if, if they're a little bit blurry, um, uh, you know, uh, a verb is a doing word, okay? If you're not sure, then it's okay because you're with 80%. Now it's a sad indictment on our education system that that's the case, but that's another video, okay? So if that's the case, that we're not even sure about a verb, noun, and an adjective, what on earth are we going to do with stuff like the present perfect, preterite, okay, the um, blue perfect, subjunctive, okay? So what on earth were they thinking about? Let's just take an example. Present perfect. Now, let's say you said to yourself, all right, the present perfect, let's see if we can work this out logically, what it is. Well, it's present so it must be a present tense. Wrong! It's not a present tense. It's a past tense. Okay? Up to the present moment, but it's a past tense. And so, present perfect. It's not even the present. How can I call it perfect when it's actually the past? It should be the imperfect present because it's not present. Okay? What about this one? The preterite. The preterite. Preterito in Spanish, okay? How on in Dickens could you identify what tense that was? You couldn't. Preterit, uh, well let's have a look, it's got pre. It's got pre in it, so perhaps it's past tense, okay? Perhaps. It just happens to be the past tense, but there's no way you could identify which past tense, and we've got lots of them, okay? So, what on earth were they thinking about? Well, what they were thinking about was not helping people to understand. This is my idea. 
This is a radical idea. What about this? Just to make things easier, what if we start calling the present perfect tense the I have eaten tense? What about that? Everybody would understand it, wouldn't they? Everybody would understand it. Um, what tense is that one? That's the I have eaten tense. Oh, I see. So like, I have eaten, I have done. Oh, yes, I understand that. Yeah? What if we called the preterite tense the I ate tense? The I ate. What tense is that one, the preterite? Oh, that's the I ate. Oh, I see, I ate, I drank, I went. Oh, yeah. I came, I saw, I conquered. Oh, Julius Caesar, yeah. Was it Julius Caesar? Yeah. Okay, he used the preterite tense. Wouldn't that be easier? It's not that much longer, is it? The I ate tense. Very easy. Preterite, all right? The imperfect, imperfect past. Why should it be imperfect? What's imperfect about it? What is imperfect about it? I actually say, well, it's imperfect because you can't measure it. But it's, that still doesn't lead you to the tense. Would it not be better to call it the um, the wasing, whirring, used to tense? It's a bit long. Grant you. I grant, you know, I accept that. But hey, if that helps you learn it. Oh, oh that's the wasing. Oh, I was talking. Yeah, we were walking. I used to live. Yeah, all of that in one tense. Oh, excellent, that's handy. Yeah. How much easier would it be if we said that? Right, today we're going to study the um, the wasing, the whirring, and the used to tense. Everyone go, all right. What does wasing mean? You know, I was walking. Oh, yeah. There you are. Done. Okay. What about this one? Just to finish. The plu perfect. Plu perfect. In Spanish, worse. El plus cuam perfecto. Plus cuam perfecto. What, what's that about? And where did they come up with that name? I bet it, I bet it came, from, come from an obscure Latin word. Of course, yes. We'll, we'll add a little obscure Latin word to that because that, that will make it, nobody will know what that's about then. And then we'll look ever so intelligent, won't we? Okay. Plus quam perfecto should be called the I had eaten tense. Oh, the I had eaten tense. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, oh, when, by the time you arrived, I had eaten. Uh huh. Well, that makes sense. So, radical? I don't think so. I think it just makes common sense. Okay, so let's get your verb books out. Okay. Open the page where it's got all of these tenses and start writing down the name of the real tense. This is the, the present, I eat tense. This is a present, I eat tense. This is a preterite, I ate tense. Just start learning them in the way that helps you. Okay? I've told you the story before, but I had a man who couldn't cope with the names. He had a slight dyslexia and he would get really panicky. When, when he was faced with preterite and imperfect. So he used to call them name, women's names. That was, he had a Dorothy tense, he had a Betty tense. Excellent. But he was so much calmer and he understood what that was. So this is what we need to do. We need to start, there's an expression, kiss, use the kiss uh, system, which is keep it simple, stupid. Okay, just keep it simple. We, Oh, everyone wants to overcomplicate things, and I'm here to not overcomplicate things or try and make them as simple as I possibly can. Okay, so that's my rant over. Now, so I'm going to give you the names of the two lists that we're going to deal with, okay? Which is the indirect object pronouns and the direct object pronouns, okay? So, they are, the indirect object pronouns are to me, to you, to him, to her, to us, to you all, to them. So, this list is going to be called the furniture removers list because that's what you hear furniture removers doing to me, to me, to me, to you, to you, to, you, to him, to him. Yeah. 
So furniture removers list, when you hear that, you'll know. When I say furniture removers list, you'll know I'm talking about mete le nos os les. Mete le nos os les, okay? The other list is this one, is the direct. All right, you see them in the books, IOP and DOP. IOP and DOP, that helps me a lot. As soon as I get into acronyms, that's it, I'm lost. IOP and DOP. So direct object pronoun. So these are mete lo la nos os los las. Okay, mete lo la nos os los las. They are going to be called the shoot at list. The shoot at you list, we'll call them that. The shoot at you list. Why? Because in those sentences, that's what you tend to hear. At me. He looks at me. He shoots at me. Okay? Oh, well, we might call it the shoot at me list. All right? Because it's at me, at you, at him, or him. You, me, him, her, us, or at you. At me, at him, at us, at you all, at them. All right? So it's the shoot at me list. Boom. That's what, would, what I want to do when I read the, the names of the um, uh, of the tenses. And so we've got the furniture removers list, and we've got the shoot at me list, right? That's what we're going to call them during this series, so that you understand. Bear in mind that they do have a name, which is indirect object pronouns, furniture removers list, direct object pronouns, shoot at me list. Okay, is that fair? Right now, follow me on and we're going to start working through these and demystifying these pronouns once and for all. Pues hasta luego, chicos.